welcome to A Sandwich and Some Lovin'. Do I sound older? I'm Kelly Raspberry Evans with my younger husband and podcast co-host, Alan Evans. A train in the house. Until you have your next birthday. I'm now five years older than you, honey. Couldn't think of anything else other than younger, huh? I, I, I heard the pause. I heard the younger and... Uh, I was just my, my pregnant pause. I'll no, just... I'm not pregnant. Let's not start any rumors because obviously... I'm no longer of age to give birth. Mm -hmm. It would be miraculous conception on, for more than one reason at 57 now. For the first time ever, 50, I, I, I just, I don't know, that just hits me hard. 57 sounds so old, doesn't it? I don't think so. I don't think so. My friends keep saying, one day you'll look back and wish you were 57. You'll think that's young. I don't know. As I posted on the social medges, on the Insta, Wine, cheese, uh, what else was there? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, whiskey, leather boots, mm. trees, and friendships, and Kelly Raspberry Evans. What, what are things that get better with age? Yes, yes. yes. So I yes. would like to think so. Yes. When people say you've, you haven't changed a bit, well, isn't that a bit sad? You want to evolve. You want to grow. You want to hopefully improve, so hopefully that is true, that I've gotten better with age, not just looks-wise. Yeah, well, I, I think so. I would agree. It's always all, nice all to be told that you look younger than you are, but, you know, it's also about the quality of your character, I think. or so they say. I think all of it's getting better, I think. Um, well, I will tell you, I've been, like, really, I don't know what it is about this birthday, but I'm reassessing... Mm me <laughs> yeah and you know one of the things people um that my friends my daddy did this to me one time we went to lunch we had to go to this event with roma downey you know the famous actress and she's um i'm not, I'm not familiar I'm roma downey. she was touched by an angel she's married to the guy that created survivor anyway she writes a lot of inspirational books she's a, a christian woman and while we were at this luncheon, my daddy asked everyone at the table basically to go around and say what they loved best about me. So it was like, almost like being at my own funeral. And um, a lot of people were saying, you know, how thoughtful I am that, you know, I've, I've you know, helped people create other friendships through the common connection of me. And then, yeah, I feel like I dropped the ball on so many of um, my friendships. Like I don't check in as much as I should. I don't ask more questions about what's going on in their lives. It's all kind of, it feels like it's been more surface level lately. Yeah. And, you know, so many people have so much going on and, and they just put on that happy front and always <clears throat> smiling. And, you know, we've got like one of my dear friends, her, her father lost his wife today and it's just devastating. And, you know, I need to be offering myself to be more of service there. My sister-in-law, Lori, her parents are both, you know, in very rapidly declining health. How can I help her more and be a better, you know, friend as well as a sister-in-law to her? So I've been really looking for ways that I can be a better friend. That's mm -hmm. what turning 57 is is causing me to do. It's a, it's a period of reflection, and that's what I want to work on. Well, I think that's always, no matter your age, that's always a good thing to strive for, right? To being be, a better Being a better friend. friend. Yeah, for sure. Is there I, anything you'd like to request me to work on? <laughs> Well, you know, I've already exposed that I'm not a good enough friend. What do you think I'm not good enough at? I don't have anything for you. Oh, to, I know you do. I don't have anything for you to work on. Oh, There's sure. nothing that I sit here and I say, you know, you really need to work on this. Nothing glaringly obvious? How about something I mean, subtly? You, okay, you, okay. okay, here's one. Here we go. You, no, yeah, this is no, going to no, hurt no, my feelings no, at all. No, no, no. You being Southern, and I, we have a lot of listeners in the South, God's country. You being Southern, you will cook a vegetable... Until the vegetable has absolutely no life, DNA, color, anything left to it. What's wrong with gray vegetables? <laughs> What's wrong? Tell me. Listen. That's one thing Kelly has done since we've been married. I overcooked like, everything. Uh, just instead of like, I'll take a, I'll take a can of green beans, and I'll open the can of green beans. I'll throw it in a bowl. I'll throw it in the microwave for two minutes. Right. Done. Kelly prefers to take that same can of green beans, put it in a pot, put like the cover on the pot, and then steam that some bitch for like on the stove, on the gas stove on medium high for about 20 minutes. 
Oh, well, that's he's exaggerating. Not exaggerating. Just a tad. Now, who do you believe here, dear he's sweet queen listener? A me tad. or Kelly? Well, I do overcook things. I do admit that. Especially meat. <laughs> I'm always afraid of. Yeah. I'm afraid yeah. of undercooked meat. This isn't pile on Kelly's cooking. No, I but asked. I, I asked you asked for, for it. constructive criticism. And I've also told you I am not a cook, and I, you know, and that's, and I feel like I've, you know, shortchanged my daughter on that. But look, my mother was a great cook. Yeah, your mom's a great cook. And her great cooking didn't pass down to me, so perhaps you don't enjoy it. I don't enjoy it at all. So perhaps my disinterest in cooking and lack of cooking will just skip over Emma Kelly and maybe she'll be an excellent cook. Emma Kelly, she can cook a mean thing of ramen in that ramen cooker. Well, that's a microwavable meal. Well, hey, that's okay. Yeah. That's how you start. I finally taught her how to do that. She's still she's scared of the, the gas stove top, which I was until I had one. I don't like the idea of it. But I finally got used to that somewhat. So I need I just need to her, turn her how to teach her how to turn that on. Yeah, so that's it, babe. Just maybe instead of the green beans being on the, the stove for twenty minutes, cook things well, less. like two two minutes in the microwave, it's good. That's really all I need to work on. That's all in I got. My fifty seventh year. That's all I got. All right, well that's fine. There's those two things: be a better friend and cook green beans less. Well, all vegetables. Actually, every, all vegetables. Well, actually, all food. All food. Okay, yeah. got it. Yeah. Cut the cooking time like in half. Okay. Well, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Tell everyone what you had today. My mother-in-law, I, I'm already answering for him, she makes a uh, pancit, which is a Filipino dish yes. that apparently, Brings from what I've luck. been told, gives you good luck and a long life. That's right. And so for everyone's birthday, she makes a big pot of it, and my father-in-law brought it over today with a lovely book for me to read, Rebel Rising mm -hmm. by Rebel Wilson, because I love biographies and autobiographies, and Alan proceeded to eat three bowls Three heaping bowls why of my throwing, pancit. Why are you throwing me on Front Street? Why, I'm just telling you, why are you throwing me out there on Front Street? It's just street? the facts. I had a bowl. And there is some left. There is some left, I would say that. But well, it was absolutely it's, the best batch she ever made. It's one of my favorite things. It is. So it's it really has, uh, if you don't know, listener, I think we've talked about this before, but it ha it's made of rice noodles. Like, really, the really thin... thin they're light and, f and kind of fluffy. Yeah. They're not heavy. But you they're know? thin. It's hard Very to imagine thin. thin yet fluffy, isn't it? Yeah. It seems like an opposite. And in this batch, she didn't have any... Uh, chicken. Usually there's chicken and sometimes pork, but in this batch it was just shrimp. So it's shrimp, tofu, rice noodles, cabbage, See, carrots. I love tofu as long as it's uh, fried tofu. But yeah. It was fried, so it was firm. That's the only time I like tofu yeah. is the way my mom does it. Was it was delicious. I was very, very appreciative of that. And it was two and a half bowls. It wasn't, wasn't three and a half bowls. Well, two and a half, two and bowls, half bowls still equals three bowls. Yeah. Well, two of them more heaping than one. But anyway, yeah, all I've done is um, eat a palooza for my birthday. Because, you know, Alan took me out to a very lovely steak dinner to a restaurant we'd never attended before called Steve Fields. Or is it Stephen Fields? Ad? It was Steve Fields, wasn't it? No, ad. hashtag not an ad. And then uh, the next day. It was day, very good. It was very good. It was, I was very lovely. Yes. I was very, very impressed. I had a lovely martini. I'm proud of myself for stopping at one. You know, as Normally much... I'm saying, bring me a second yeah. garçon, but yeah. I did not do that. What's garçon mean? Um, I don't know. Sir in French or something? I don't Sir know. in what French? What does garçon mean? It's French. I thought that was monsieur. Good eye, mate. I don't um, know what garçon means. No, that Steve Field, you know, we're, we'll get on here and we'll... I mean, we'll bitch about customer service. We will. Nothing to bitch about. No, nothing at all. Nothing at Very all. Very lovely. Very lovely. And then the next day, my daughter wanted to take me to lunch slash brunch. It was going to be brunch, but because we got such a late start, it was just flat out lunch. And we went to this souffle restaurant that just opened uh, by us. There's a, there's a place in Dallas called Rise. Uh -huh. And if you ever come to Dallas, you want to go to Rise in Dallas. Not necessarily the one in Plano. Only if you want to have the chance of seeing a celebrity there, as in Martha Stewart, who At I saw. Rise in Plano? In Dallas. Oh. I just said, don't go to the one in Plano. Go to the one in Dallas oh. if you want a chance of seeing a celebrity. Okay. Because Martha Stewart has dined there. And from what I understand, former First Lady um, Laura Bush likes to go there a lot. It's a lovely restaurant. But Bush. we went to the one up north. It just opened. So they're still working out a few of the, few of the kinks and everything. And it was it was lovely. And of course, I'm not going to have Emma Kelly pay for my my lunch brunch. Mm -hmm. But when I went to go pull out my wallet, I I'd forgotten it. 
Oh, really? Well, because... You, been, I, you did that bit, huh? It's the truth, though, because the night before, you took me to dinner, and I didn't need to take my wallet because you were paying, mm -hmm. and I just grabbed my purse and forgot to put it back in there, so... I and Kelly had to dip into her debit funds, debit card funds to pay. I did that bit at your birthday party. Yeah, you forgot your wallet. Forgot my wallet. So Al Whitley, one of our friends, Al Whitley, he was buying me drinks all night. I did the, my credit card. Well, I did the bit like, uh, come on, Al, I'll buy you a drink. I get up there and I'm like, uh, can you spot me, dude? He's like, yeah, no problem, man. So he well, bought he's Canadian, so he's just, yeah, oh, no, no problem. No, for nothing's ever a problem. So sweet. So he bought me that one, and then he ended up buying me two or three more, and I said, dude, I, I wasn't expecting you to, like, front my drinks all night. He's like, ah, don't worry about it. It's all good. Well, Al, our friend Al, has a big 5-0 coming up, and he's doing a trip to Cabo San Lucas. Now, I've never been to Cabo. It's a place I've always been intrigued about and wanted to go um, from what I've been told it's about a three-hour flight so not we usually go to Cancun because it feels so close but Cabo is not that much further than by, by air um, but you know I have to work and there is a chance I might have to do a work trip so I'm I'm telling Alan you have my blessing Wow if you want to go to Al the Al yeah. Whitley's 50th birthday well, in Cabo was, without me. I thought it was over a weekend, though. It is, but the trip is to New Orleans um, over a weekend. Oh, seriously? Yeah. Wow. I told you this. I told them I was waiting to hear back. There's a chance it might be canceled, but it's around a Taylor Swift thing, mm. and so it looks like I might have to go. But if you really want to go to Cabo, and you love Al and, and Priscilla. I love Al and Priscilla. You, you have my blessing. They're going to wow. rent a yacht one day. Didn't they say like a big boat or a, something? A yacht. I think they'll be miss out on that. You think there'll be any drinking at this party? Oh, my. Oh. You know you have to go. God. Their parties are epic. My head's already starting to hurt thinking about it. Well, my head wasn't hurting from my birthday party, but I, I will tell you, I woke up still a little drunk the next morning. Well, still a little swimmy. Tell you what, why don't we uh, talk about that party after we do that? Well, I'll tell you this. You know, I was um, so happy <laughs> to collapse into my bed when we got home from my wild birthday party. You know, I used to turn and toss and turn on our old queen size mattress, but ever since we switched to our Helix, it's been a game changer for us. We've had ours for what, over five years now? We have. Maybe six. I, I'm really bad at the calendar. Six years of sleep. Mm -hmm. Perfect it's sleep. Never been better. And it's not just Alan and me who love it. Our dog Zoe loves to cuddle up with us. She does. On our Helix Dusk Lux. It's the perfect mattress for the three of us, apparently. You know, Alex, uh, Alan took the Helix wow. sleep quiz. Well, Alan and Helix together. Who's Alex? Say Alex. That's my other husband. But Alan took the Helix sleep quiz. Super simple. Uh, less than two minutes, and based on our body sizes, our sleep preferences, we were matched with the Dusk Lux. So which one will be your perfect match? Take the Helix Sleep Quiz and find out. You'll know in under two minutes. Helix lineup includes 20 unique mattresses or something for every body, from their award-winning Lux and Ultra Premium Elite collections to the Helix Plus for big and tall sleepers, the Helix Kids mattress endorsed by child sleep experts, Plus, Helix makes it so easy. Your personalized mattress is shipped right to your door free of charge. They've got a 100-night trial and a 10 to 15-year warranty, depending on the style you buy, so you can sleep on it and decide for yourself. But we have no doubt you're going to love it. And if you're concerned about health and safety, Helix mattresses are fiberglass-free. I didn't know, honestly, that you needed to look for that, but that, that's something you need to look for. And that's a big reason why leading chiropractors and doctors of sleep medicine recommend Helix. Trust us, you're going you're gonna to have the best night's sleep, and it's just a click away. And Helix is offering up to 30% off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners. Just go to helixsleep.com slash sandwich. That's helixsleep.com slash sandwich. And this is their best offer yet, and it won't last long. With Helix, better sleep starts now. 30% off? Oh. That's huge. Well, it's, it's huge. It's huge. It's huge. All right, so yeah, so um, I woke up from my lovely sleep, not in pain, just swimmy-headed, because um, I didn't really think I drank that terribly much, but you know what, Alan? I didn't eat supper. I never ate that night. Oh, at the... Uh, at well, my birthday. Tell everybody what the party was about. Well, so, so Friday night, Alan took me to dinner at Steve Fields, Saturday, Emma Kelly took me to lunch at mm -hmm. Rise. Mm -hmm. Saturday night, 
um, we went, I, I had to get it together for like 30 to 40 people because people are asking me, what do we do for your birthday? What are you doing for your birthday? And for 57, I wouldn't have normally done anything. But Tommy Jean, my best friend since fifth grade, was flying in. And everybody wanted to get together. So I was like, what can we do? If we go to a restaurant and sit down for dinner, you're just talking to the two or three people right there in your face. And you don't get to visit, right? Mm -hmm. I'm really into visiting. Oh. That's like my favorite thing in the world yes. is to visit. Yes. And so I was like, well, where can we go where we could all just kind of mix and mingle and something fun to do? And you know that those truck yards are very popular right now. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to do that necessarily with the beer the like garden. Beer garden. Yeah. So I just typed in April 13th of 2024, things to do in, you know, my city. And this Deaf Legend or Deaf Leopard tribute band called Deaf Legend was performing at an, an outdoor venue. Mm -hmm. And I said, perfect, done. So I bought 40 tickets, figuring it was a big, like a block, like this whole row of tables where we could mix and mingle and, you know, not have to sit where we were and then just get everybody to pay me a whopping $12.80 each. I That's thought, what it averaged out to per ticket. I thought there was a lot of entertainment value there. Now, normally, I would just front the bill and say, it's on me. Just show up. You know, Alan has me on a budget now. And so I told everybody, you give me that twelve eighty, if you want to price of admission twelve dollars really? eighty cents to party with really? me. Really, you're gonna once again throw me on Front Street, saying that I'm the reason you were asking for twelve dollars. Yeah, because you got you're pulling the purse strings so tight. I'm choking. Well, that may be true, but I never saw any of that twelve dollars eighty cents times forty. Because it's in my um, it's in my Venmo. Okay, all right. It's in my Venmo. I must not be too tight because I didn't didn't even know where it was. It's in my Venmo. Okay. Well, there you go. So anyway, we had a great time. People, I, I was I was a bit panicky because I had all the wristbands and I was waiting for everybody to show up and people were running late. And then suddenly I found out people I'd been waiting for about 30 or 45 minutes had already gotten in. They just said, hey, we're with uh, Kelly Raspberry Evans. And they just let them in. They dropped, the, the, di the, they dropped the dime, huh? Well, apparently it's the honor system. Oh, okay. So I had all, you know, anyway, so I was sweating in my, I was sweating everywhere, y'all, because I get real hyped up. I get real anxious and... I could finally calm down. So my adrenaline's pumping, mm -hmm. had not eaten, and part-time Justin for my birthday present bought me my first martini. Oh, nice. So there's, because I told everybody don't bring presents, and he said, I'm going to buy you a martini. So I had three drinks all night. That's not bad. I had, at the I venue. Had, I had way more than that. I had three at the venue, two martinis and one vodka soda. Mm -hmm. But then we came back to Evans Manor, because as sometimes things tend to happen, People are saying, where are we going next, Kelly? Are we going back to your house? Right? Well, wait a second. A lot of stuff happened at the party. Are you like going to blow over it like that? What? Well, Def Leppard Tribute Man. Def, Def Legend. Yeah, they were awesome. Yeah. They were some good. They were great. Now, was there a person under 45 years old there? Yeah. Some of our friends. Oh. Well, they were kind of there because they felt obligated, probably. It was kind of cute. Um... Anna from the Kid Craddock Morning Show. Yeah, she's in the of course, when somebody's panning the phone around, you want to act like you know the music. And, <laughs> and she doesn't know any of the lyrics. And she's just you know, like, I'm hot, Vicky Beat. It was so funny. She didn't know the words. but No, that, that band was, was really pretty good. Yeah, I think this might be the ACDC tribute band as well. It they was. just trade wigs it and was. costumes. It was. But they're very, they're very good. Yeah, they very sound good. just like Def Leppard. Yeah, pretty good. good. Now I had just real quick. I had a I'm not trying to hijack your birthday, but just real quick blast from the past, kind of oddest feeling at your birthday party. I understand they're dancing, watching Def Leppard with you know around with the, the friends and everything, and I get a tap on the shoulder. And have you ever had one of those moments where you see somebody and it takes you just a second or two it's or out three? Out of context. Yeah, just to process what is happening. Mm -hmm. Well, that happened all the time. To, that happened to me. I get a tap on the shoulder. I turn around. And there's these two big smiling faces smiling at me, and there were two of my college buddies that I haven't seen in 31 years. That's pretty amazing. I was like, "You're welcome for what? having my birthday." I was like, "What are you guys doing here?" It was it's Kelly's birthday. It was crazy. Yeah. Uh, actually, one, one of the, my buddies' name his name's Sean, and the other guy his name's Todd. Todd actually went to A and M, but his wife Michelle went to Tech. So I knew I knew Sean and, and Michelle from Tech. I knew Todd because he was, you know, he eventually married Michelle. 
But anyway, I hadn't seen any of these people in over 30 years. It was just so cool to see people. The last time I saw them would have been oh, probably over 31 years ago because we lived in the same dorm. What, did y'all exchange numbers? Y'all made it together? Well, we're all connected on Facebook, but we never have well, do we've it. Not seen each other. You do know? it. Get together. We want to, but it was just so fun to see somebody that I haven't seen in that long and uh, trying to catch everybody up on like 31 years. Well, then you need to make it. I'm going to remind you tomorrow to reach out to them and schedule a lunch date or something. They're like, how, how old are your kids now? And I'm like, how old are your kids? And they're like, oh, we got one in college? I'm like, oh my gosh, it's, it's just crazy how, how the time goes. And they said, yeah, we... We were just here hanging out, and we heard someone say from the stage, it's Kelly Raspberry's birthday, and then we knew you were probably here somewhere. Probably. So, so then we started looking, and we saw you. Oh, well, a lot of people were afraid you weren't there. Did you see? Who? Well, I'm the worst at taking pictures. I never pull out my phone to take pictures, so I just pose for pictures and tell everybody, tag me. Uh -huh. And so when I was, I'm mingling around. You were with Tommy Jean and hanging out with Al and all those people because y'all were eating and stuff. Yeah. And... I, a lot of pictures, I was just reposting what people were taking, and right. you were in none of the pictures. Yeah, I wasn't in any of the pictures so, of Def Leppard. So everybody was like, where's Alan? What's wrong with Alan? <laughs> and some woman slipped into my DMs, and it, she was drunk. And she was going off about you know how sad it was about me and you. And what? You, and I was like, what in the world? The next morning I woke up, and the message had disappeared. So I don't know if she was able to what delete is, it or something. But that? people thought... Our marriage was in trouble because you weren't in any of the birthday pictures. Really? That's the reason. That that's messages. the reason they thought we, the the marriage was in trouble. <laughs> well, that and you criticizing my cooking all the time. <laughs> that's pretty funny. No, I was, You were off running around with all your friends, I was busy. and I, I was, was I was hanging out with uh, Al and. Um, and Tommy Jean, y'all ate together. And Tommy Jean, and... yeah, she, Tommy Jean was starving, so her and I went into the Legacy Hall. And I showed her all the different restaurants and took her a minute to, you know, decide this what she idea wanted. Is so, so we, overwhelming. So we landed on barbecue and that took a while. So then we finally took our barbecue outside. But then And I was eating the olives out of my martini for supper. <laughs> yeah. And as we were setting our food down, we saw Justin and I kid you not, I see Justin for the first time, say hi to Justin, give him a hug or whatever. He goes and sits down and sits on someone's drink and spills it. <gasps> oh, and I he's told always... Well, I told Tommy Jean, I said I don't think I've ever been to a party where either Justin hasn't spilled a drink on me or I've watched him spill a drink. That's just his bit. That's just his bit. It's his bit. He's so clumsy and I don't know what it is. He's just flailing about. Yeah. But anyway, please please reach out to your college friends. That was that wild. Happen. Well, it turns out Todd rides, rides uh, bikes. Well, there you go. He's, he, goes, I, he goes, I have a couple of Harleys. I'm like, well, that's crazy because I do too. That's nuts. I, did, I had no idea. Serendipitous, honey. He said, well, I only ride to like Starbucks. I'm like... Well, that's what you do. I'm like, come on. Yeah, are you kidding me? Well, you do that, mostly. Well, I, well, I do. Mostly, and then when you but have... But you are a, talking to a two-time iron butt... I know. ...finisher, but, you know. But mostly, you mostly. ride it up to yeah, Starbucks. Yeah, that's true. That's true. So anyway, I encourage you to do that. But everybody came back to our house for a little after party, and that was... I mean, it was nothing really... I mean... Andrea picked up David, which always happens. I think Laura is going to start trying to pick up David. I Andrea mean, Dowling Gulledge picked up David? Yeah, literally. That's their bit. She picks him up. Well, she's... She will admit that she's big people. She's a big she's person. She's, she's tall. She's like us. She's big, you know? And she's strong. Because she's married to Big Strong Trey. Yeah. Yeah, you got to be big and strong if you're married to Big Strong Trey. So, yeah, she picks up David, who David is like... Maybe a little taller than Peter Dinklage. Maybe a little bit? That's not nice. Why is that not nice? They admit they're short. I'm not going to. What? I'm not going to pile on. David is not a David and man. Melissa admit that they're but small. But I wouldn't put him in the same sentence with Peter Dinklage. Okay, well anyway, he's, he's not a tall guy. So he told me he weighs 150 pounds. So that's the reason that Andrea picks him up. Oh. So then I saw this bit. And I'm like, hey, Andrea, come pick me up. And she looked at me like. I missed that. I, I'm not going to be able to pick you up. But my I was daughter, like, wow, wow. My daughter didn't miss the big, she's like, oh. you're being so loud, I can't sleep. I've got the ACT test tomorrow. I was mm -hmm. like, I'm sorry, sorry, honey, I'm so sorry. Everybody was being loud. And she's like, I can't sleep. And all I saw was a woman picking up a man. <laughs> so I was like, well, sorry, isn't, honey. <laughs> isn't that funny? Like, that would be funny to 
have somehow have all that bit recorded, like Emma Kelly coming down, and here's a bunch of like 50s adults partying and having a good time. <laughs> and she, each other. Yeah, and she comes down, and she's really grumpy because she can't get sleep. And then fast forward maybe like two or three years when she's in college. <laughs> You think that that's going to be going on? We'll see. Y'all quiet down so I can get some sleep. You think she's going to be doing that? Hey, there's always that girl in the dorm. Oh, There's always that girl in the dorm. Well, yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Some are actually there to go to school and study. Yeah. But it was fun. Tommy Jean was here, and we, you know, the thing about Tommy Jean is she's so super chill. Don't she? She's the only person who went to New York City for the first time and said... Mm -hmm. I don't need to see Times Square. I'll get it the next time I come. That's how chill she is. True story. And so um, after we just, we went to lunch with my parents on Monday after my birthday. And my mother surprised me and gave, went ahead and gave me my mother Price's platinum ring. And this is a ring that um, my mother thinks it might be about 75 years old. My mother Price passed it down to her. And mama said she was going to wait. She was going to maybe wait and give it to me on my 60th birthday. But she went ahead and decided to give it to me this year so she'd have three more years to watch me enjoy wearing it. And it's, it's very pretty. absolutely something I've had my eye on because I knew I was eventually going to be getting it. I just didn't expect it now. So I was really excited. And I showed Emma Kelly and she I said, and someday Emma Kelly, I'm going to pass this down to you. Mm. She said, I don't wear silver. <laughs> I said, but it's platinum. She said, it's not my style. <laughs> I said, but it's um, it's a family keepsake. It's yes. an heirloom piece. Right. I'll keep it in a in a box in a what she called a, a heirloom box or a memory box or something. I said, well, you're not getting it. If that's what you're gonna do with it. But anyway, I'm sure she will change her mind on that. I don't think children like it. I don't. When parents start talking about when I'm not around anymore. I didn't say when I'm not around. Because my mother's still around and she gave it to me. She wants to watch me enjoy wearing it. I love this ring so much. I'm just saying. My dad, my dad's famous for that. What, when I'm dead? Yeah. Just the other day. He what has he promised us? He ain't promised us anything. What is he What is he promising? He promised coal. His, tr- oh his truck. He's leapfrogging over us to the grandchildren. <laughs> He's got... My dad's got this old truck. It's a, I think it's a 2004. Uh, it's a Ford F-150. It's green. He's had that truck. He bought it brand new. It's got roll-up windows and a heater and a radio. Those are the options. And uh, it's a great truck. It's only got like, I want to say, last time he told me, I think it's got like 70,000 miles on it, which isn't a lot for a 2004 all he ever did with it was drive it back and forth to work when he lived in Wichita Falls. Hey, like, he came close to selling it. Uh, yeah, I don't. He wasn't ever going to sell that thing. But anyhow, I moved many times using that truck. I think I moved. Um, oh yeah, I know I moved out of a couple of houses into <laughs> apartments, and then to another apartment, and then to King's. Uh, Brook address wherever you lived the first time. Our first marriage house. Yeah, and then over here to the the, the manor, uh, we use that truck a lot. Anyway, he was talking the other day, and he said, uh, he said, yeah, when I conk out, I guess Cole can have my truck. And I'm like, what? Why are you? T- why are you saying that? I don't understand. I think when people get older, you start thinking, you know, like in our stage of life, I can't stop talking about retirement. And then I guess once you retire. The next, then you just can't stop talking about when you're dead. <laughs> I guess that's the natural progression of things, right? Mm. Yeah, maybe. Maybe, I don't know. I don't know. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm going to be dead if we don't do another one of these. Well, Alan already told you that I cook food to death. That's why oh. I love meal delivery services, and my favorite is Factor Meals. If you're ready to eat stress-free this spring, We've got just the thing. Say hello to Factor's hello. delicious, ready-to-eat meals, fresh, never frozen, chef-crafted, dietitian approved And the best part, they're ready to eat in just two minutes. No shopping, no complicated recipes, no running back to the store because you forgot something, and no cooking. You just pop your Factor meal into the microwave. You're ready to eat in just two minutes. I can't screw that up. Factor offers a weekly menu of 35 mouth-watering options, whether you're into calorie smart, that's what we do, keto, protein plus, or vegan and veggie, Factor has so many delicious options. And if your taste leans more toward the gourmet, you can indulge in premium ingredients like 
filet mignon, shrimp, and truffle butter. Factor has more than 60 add-ons every week. It makes your life so much easier. Breakfast, on-the-go lunches, snacks, beverages, and more. You can customize weekly meals to fit your schedule. If you need more or less, it's not a problem. You can pause or reschedule deliveries anytime. And for the month of April, Factor is celebrating Earth Day all month. Just look for the Earth Month Eats badge for their lowest carbon footprint meals. Head to factormeals.com slash sandwich50 and use code sandwich50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next box. That's code sandwich50 at factormeals.com slash sandwich50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next box while your subscription is active. Thank you, Factor. I ron burgundy that thing. Yeah, you did. You did a good job, honey. Um, so, I guess very briefly, while Tommy Jean was in for a couple of days, it, as I usually do when you guys are doing, you know, girl, visiting. visiting and girl stuff. Um, you pieced out. I pieced out. I hit the road. I got on the, I got on the hog and I headed south. And um, reason being, partly because you know Kelly was going to hang out with Tommy Jean for the weekend and do a lot of do a lot of things with her, and I'm doing that motorcycle grand tour of Texas again this year. It's it's sort of like the motorcycle adult man's version of Boy Scouts. Really? Because you complete tasks and your <laughs> prize is a patch. Yes. Good call. Good call. Yeah, that's true. It's like a scavenger hunt, kind of. And you get a booklet. I have my booklet around here somewhere. But there are 50 stops in Texas. Now, you don't have to hit all 50. If you do, you're an overachiever. And you get a bigger patch. You get a bigger and better patch. And there are cash prizes for the more points you earn. I'm like bare minimum guy here. Like 25 is the bare minimum to get your patch. Mm -hmm. So my goal is 25. So I started, um, yeah, there were a couple of stops. Uh, Kyle Field and at College Station was one of them. Now, okay, hear me out, guys. I think most of you know, if you've listened for a while, I went to tech. I'm a tech guy. Guns up. Guns up. Got my guns up. Had to go to Kyle Field. What is their, what is their saying? Giga Mackies. Oh, that's right. The thumbs up. Um, so, you know, uh, okay, whatever. I'm going to go to Kyle Field, go down there to College Station. I have to admit, Texas A&M is a very nice campus. It's got a beautiful campus. Kyle Field was impressive. Um, I rode up, I forget the name of the road, but the baseball stadium was across from the football stadium and there was a game going on and, um, I could hear the fans cheering and they were getting into the cheers, you know, and the campus was very quiet because it was a Sunday, but with the baseball game going on, it was just cool. You know, mm -hmm. it just reminded me of being back in college. Just, I don't know, college campuses are cool. Nostalgia. Very nostalgic. But I thought, I thought Texas A&M and College Station was, I was impressed. I hadn't been there in, gosh, forever. So uh, that was one of the stops. I got a picture of my bike with my number, my tour number, uh, next to Kyle Field. Another stop was in uh, Navasota. There was a mural of uh, Davy Crockett that you needed to take a picture of. And he's on his cell phone, and he's texting somebody. Davy Crockett, you know, with his coonskin hat. He's texting? He's texting, and the text bubble says, all oh, y'all can go to hell. I'm going to Texas. Oh, I saw that. You, sh you posted a picture Yeah, I thought that. that was pretty cool. I went to um, early Texas. I've heard of early. I've heard of it. I went to early. Now, I pulled up to early to the visitor center, and I'm just taking all my crap off and taking my picture with the bike um, next to the visitor center. A representative from early comes running out. Running. Babe, walking very briskly my direction. Jogging. Yes. She said, are you with the tour? And I said, yes, ma'am. What tour? The Motorcycle Grand Tour. Oh, I thought maybe there was another tour going on. No, the Motorcycle Grand Tour. Oh, I, I just being on a tour, I guess, implies more than one per. I, okay, that's fine. Well, I know what you're talking about. She now. goes, "Are you on the tour?" And I said, "Yeah." She goes, "Yeah." I, I figured, you know, we got a lot of riders coming through. There was just a whole bunch of them here about about an hour ago. And I'm like, "Yeah." She goes, uh, she "Goes, come on in. Uh, do you need anything? Do you need any water? Do you need a candy bar? Is there anything I can provide for you?" Aww, she was nice. so nice. So, uh, and as I reminded Alan, she probably thought he was single because he did not wear his <laughs> wedding ring on this bike trip. I had my wedding ring on the bike trip. I did not have my wedding ring on at that particular no, you did not. moment because, you know, I have gloves and I have all kinds of things mm -hmm. I have to take on and off. She probably thought she had a, a warm one. I don't, I don't think so. I, I don't. 
was that the right word? Mm -hmm. Hot, what's the word? Uh, warm meat? What's the word I'm looking for? Fresh meat? Anyway. I, I don't believe so. Single meat? I, I don't believe so. No. Just judging by my interaction with said woman, I don't. She was offering you candy bars. She was offering me candy bars and water and a bathroom, a place to use the restroom. So I go inside, hang out, get a water. I did take her up on the water. I did not take her up on the candy bar. And as I was leaving, she was working on her computer and her back was facing me. And I said, okay, thank you. And she goes, ah! Oh, she, my God. I, I scared the... You scared me just yeah, now. Yeah, I, I scared the so living loud. crap out of her. And I'm like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I, yeah, I'm sorry. She's like, oh, it's okay. So I guess we had a positive interaction. Until but then. When then. I, until then, when I left, and I scared the hell out of her. Yeah, scared me. Yeah. Okay, so early... Um, where else did I go? College Station. Burleson. Burleson. I just went Home to... Home of Kelly Clarkson. Went to Bur Burleson because uh, there's a Harley dealer there. I wanted my poker chip. LaGrange. Mm-hmm. I think there's a ZZ Top song about LaGrange, isn't there? I don't know. Well, anyway, there was a... If it wasn't on MTV with a music video attached, I'm not familiar with the ZZ Top catalog. Wow. Wow. Like I said, I watched them in, you know, on MTV. Well, you ain't from Texas, then. I'm not. I'm from South Carolina. South Carolina. So anyway, that, that's what I did. I, uh, I hit all those stops and then came back... Uh, yesterday. Did I come back yesterday? Tuesday. You came back Tuesday and, and Tommy Jean and I went to Tommy Waxahachie Jean. to take Big Al's wife Amy out My to man. lunch. My and then Al and Amy had Tommy Jean and I be guests on their Third Wheel podcast. Oh, okay. I'll have to check that one out. Well, Al put Tommy Jean on the spot and said, Tommy Jean... I want you to tell us a story about Kelly from childhood that's never been told before. I was like, oh, you got to give somebody a heads up when you ask something Did like that. Did she produce? That. Did she produce? She was trying to think of something. And um, we finally we finally came up with um, the time Sonia called me a bitch. Whoa. It's <laughs> not very nice. Well, it wasn't. It hurt my feelings. Well, it's not very nice. It wasn't nice. Well, um, so yeah, I, I did 750-something miles on the trip. And I guess... I guess we can start to bring it home for Jerome here, but public service announcement. I had my first, I told Kelly, I wouldn't call it like near death experience, near death experience or even, I wouldn't even call it like drama, but it was something that I learned from for sure. And I think if you're, if you're driving even a car, you can learn from this. Mm -hmm. So, um, I just left college station and I'm headed towards the Austin area. So it's a two lane highway, one lane going one way, one lane going the other way. And it's very hilly. It's very windy. The speed limit's about, I think it was 55. And uh, not a lot of traffic, but most of the way I was behind this pickup truck. And I was never in a position where I could pass the truck because of the hills and it was, there were blind turns and all this. So I was about, I'd say, 100 yards behind the truck. Number one, wasn't tailgating. Safe, safe distance. Safe distance. Plenty of room to break if necessary. Right. Number two, I was going the speed limit. 55, I wasn't like... It's 55 for a reason. That's oh, what the safety official deemed. That's right. was the fastest you could travel. I was not ball hammering around the, the hills of Austin. Mm -hmm. So the truck in front of me goes over a hill and disappears, right? And so I'm going, I'm following him. I'm going over the same hill and I can't see like what's over the hill. So whenever I'm in that situation, and I think most people should probably do this when they drive. It's like slow down just a little bit. Right. It's <laughs> Cause, scary. Because you don't know what's over the hill. It could be a it's true. It could be a kid with a ball. It could be a it, dog. It, could it be... scares me every time I go over like and I don't that doesn't happen a lot. I don't drive in real hilly areas. But when you're about to go over that hill and you don't know what's facing on the other side, that's scary. Yeah. So I had my music on, you know, it was on pretty loud, and I have a full face helmet. So I, you know, you don't hear really a lot other than the radio, the wind, and the bike. So I come over this hill, and I notice there's something in the road, and it is rolling and blowing up and disintegrating in front of me. And it took me just a second to process what it was. The, my first thought was, that's a deer. The, the, the truck in front of me hit a deer, and the deer is tumbling. And it took me like half a second. I'm like, oh shit, no, that's a grill. A gas grill, or it might have been a charcoal grill, I don't know. But it was a grill. Had flown out of the back of this guy's truck, out of his truck, hit the highway, and like, if you started can imagine, apart, it just yeah. started falling apart. It's rolling down. So since I was like 100 yards away, I had plenty of time to, you know, 
slow down and then there was nobody coming in the other direction. Thank goodness. So then I swerved around and as I swerved around the stuff, it was still kind of rolling, you know, in pieces. So I think the guy in front of me finally realized what happened. He pulls over and I, I'm going slow now. I'm going like, you know, 20 and he's looking at me like, what did you do, Bozo? Yeah, he's looking at me like I'm the a-hole and yeah. I'm like, I just waved to him like, I'm okay. But he didn't, they, they didn't they, care. He didn't care. They're just looking at me. And I'm like, well, okay, tie your crap down next time. Butthead. Bozo. Bozo. So anyhow, I guess my public service announcement is follow a safe, safe distance, go the speed limit. And in my case, I was ready to stop. I was I was covering the brakes. So it was all good. There you go. Nothing to, nothing to panic about. Nope. You don't want any drama on the Gave bike. Gave you a story to tell, though. Oh, uh, you don't want any drama. You just Everything's cool. You just want to be cool. Be cool, man. Be cool. Everything's going to be cool. Keep on trucking, Jive Turkey. That's right. All right, honey. Well, I've got to go uh, get myself ready for bed. By the way, I tried parting my hair on a different side. Did you notice? You did not. It looks like <laughs> it's parted in the middle. Well, when it's it's not really. Oh. I'm trying. Well, I've got a honestly, very bad. I, honestly, I did not notice yeah, I know. because it looks I've, like it's parted in the middle. I've got a very bad cow lick, and I'm trying, and it's like a, it's, I don't know. I'm just trying different things. I'm thinking about cutting my hair all off. Mm. You know, Fifty Seven does that to you. You're like, well, is it time just to cut it off and let it go gray? Mm. I don't know. Mm. No, not feeling I mean, that. <laughs> I mean, you want to cut it short and let it go gray? Yeah, maybe. Are you gonna go? Are you going to go to the hairdresser places where they put that thing on your head, you know, like they, Connie used to have them at her shop, you know, like you sit there and then well, they it's put, a hair dryer. they put that thing like it's over your, dryer. what is that? It's a hair dryer. But, so when you get But why hair, do old ladies do that? Because when you get your hair set in curlers, uh -huh. you can't do hard air on it. So you do very low and slow, oh. low and slow. So it's like, the, it's like the crock pot of hair dryers. Yes. You're basically putting your head in a crock pot. Pretty much. Hmm. Don't hey, start it's going to happen eventually. Don't, don't start doing that. Not yet? No. No. Uh, no. Please. All right. <laughs> Maybe I'll just stick with changing my part for now. Just change your part. Just change your part. I still think it looks nice. It Thank looks, you, honey. I think it looks really great. Well, I colored it before Tommy Jean got here, and they were out of the regular color I used, so I had to go a shade brighter. It's all right, though. No, I did notice the color. Yeah, it's a little brighter. Yeah, I did notice the color. You hate it? No. You like it darker. I, I don't you do. hate it, but it, you like it darker. But I mean, it's raspberry. Yeah, yeah. it is. It's red. It's a little redder than it's normal. It's red. You don't like it? No, I like it. And we have uh, in the in the studio here. It we, makes it look even redder. This light. Yeah, we have orange light on Kelly. That's making it look even redder. You hear the love in his voice about how red it is. Maybe we should throw some. What could we throw on that to make it less red? Gray. No light. Gray light. I don't know. Gray light? I don't know anything about lights. I don't know why you have blue on you and orange on me. I don't understand that. Is there a reason behind that? Mm -hmm. What? Only I know. No. You know best, honey. That's true. Keep thinking that and saying that. <laughs> All right. All right, babe. You got anything else? No. All right. Well, <laughs> I love you desperately. I love you. Love our listeners desperately. Love y'all. Even those, even those that have uh, predicted uh, my demise because I wasn't in any pictures. That's, that's pretty hey, funny. They, thought, they were like, "Where's Alan? Where's Alan?" Hey, listen. I'm well, in every picture like that's ever been taken. It, like it seems it's like it's not for my birthday. It seems like there I am. Just for not this birthday. There, I was in the group shot. Yeah, in that one group shot, but a lot of them you weren't in them. It's oh. okay, Alan. We're still married. It's fine. Hey, before we go, let us remind you. If you have just stumbled across this podcast for the first time, and for whatever reason you kind of liked it, please subscribe. And listen, I've been listening to a lot of my favorite podcasts, and I really don't know how algorithms, algorithms and things like that work, but apparently when you leave a five-star review and a, and a nice review to go with it, it really helps us get more listeners. And, you know, I was talking to, we've got a new um, guy that's overseeing all the podcasts, and I was like, you know, I love our podcast family. We vacation with our podcast family. A lot of people at my birthday party are friends of ours because of our mm -hmm. podcast family. True story. And I like to grow my friendship circle and our podcast family circle. I thought circle. you said you had enough friends. No, that's you. Oh. I never said I have enough friends. When is that ever going to happen? You've said you've had, a, you had enough friends. Like Was I saying it sarcastically? I don't know. 
because I don't remember Sound saying that sincere, meaning it. Sounds I don't pretty remember. sincere to me. Anyway, if you would like, subscribe, give us a nice review, share it with your friends. That'd be great. Also, Alan has been putting a lot of work into setting up our our podcast little office here with the lights, orange and blue and whatever. Studio. The studio slash his office. Yes. Um, because he wants to make it look nicer for our YouTube channel. So if you're listening to the podcast and you have not checked that out yet, please go to YouTube and search for A Sandwich and Some Lovin'. Mm -hmm. And um, he's going to be adding more, more things there, uh, interesting little motorcycle bits. Maybe I'll share... Um, some of my favorite things, my mama's recipes and things like that nature. We're just going to try to like build our little podcast family. Yeah, sure. Yeah, like and subscribe at the YouTube channel. You can't miss it. It's like bright pink, all of it. A sandwich and some lovin'. At a sandwich and some lovin'. Yes. Like and subscribe. We're going to post this episode there too. If you prefer to watch us do this ridiculousness, you can watch us do this ridiculousness on YouTube. On YouTube. If you prefer to listen, that's great. We would prefer you do both. Why not? Do it twice. A sandwich and some lovin'. That's right. All right, y'all. Podcast so nice, they named it twice. A sandwich and some lovin'. That doesn't make sense. It doesn't. But I am sure we will podcast again real soon. And in the immortal words of the great Keanu Reeves, life is good. Have a good sandwich. <laughs>